Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am trying new to me luxury makeup. So I picked up some Valentino, Chantepat, and Dior makeup products. There were so many sales in the month of December, I decided to take advantage of them. And I have found my new favorite bronzer and blush. You guys, this is such a good formula. And if you have tried my recommendations before and really enjoy them, you will love these products. I'm really excited to share this get ready with me. So let's just get straight into the video. So as always, I'm going to start with the eyes. Now I don't have a new, well I do have a new eyeshadow, but I don't have a new eyeshadow palette. I just picked up a single of the Chantecai Luminous and Eyeshades. But I haven't used this Syrup palette in ages on my channel. So this does have similar shades to the Beyond Beige. I had to declutter my Beyond Beige palette. So I only have three shades. I still need to get the lightest shade, but I am going to start with the shade Rage. That is what it is. It's described as a matte taupe. I love it. This formula is absolutely beautiful. I've already gone ahead and primed my eyes. I'm just gonna take a Sonia G. This is a Blender Pro brush. And what I like to do is just, I'll dip into that color just a few times. And then as always, I like to top off that excess just so I don't go in with too much pigmentation. I like really soft makeup, so that's why I don't go in with a lot of product because I just like a slight bit of definition. So I am starting just on the outer corner of the eye, just to add some depth there. And then with the excess product, so now I don't have as much product on my brush, I'm going to blend that through the crease just ever so slight, slightly. I'm going to dip into this deepest shade here and it's called Truff, it's like a dark brown. Taking it on a flat definer and I'm just going to push this color at the lash line. So I want to add some definition and depth at the lash line. I probably would say this is my favorite way to do eyeshadow is just add a little bit of depth to the lash line just so it makes my lashes look darker and thicker. That's kind of how I normally do my eyeshadow on a daily basis. And then sometimes what I like to do if I want to add even more depth there is I'll take that color and get it quite a bit on that brush on both sides. And I'll press it from almost like I'm pressing it into my tight line. So I'm getting it super close to the lash line, kind of distributing that powder product in between the lashes, almost even getting it into my eyelashes, just so it makes my lashes look even thicker. And this is kind of like the precursor to me tight lining my eyes. So it's gonna be just really dark and pigmented at the lash line where I want the most depth of color. Just it makes the lashes look thicker and I think it just looks a little better. I don't know if you can tell the difference between this eye and this eye, but I think this eye looks better. I feel like these Surat eyeshadows are just, just super underrated. They're such a creamy formula. It really reminds me of the Tom Ford um, Creme Formulation. Um, or also similar to the Chanel Tweed palettes that came out. Very similar formula. They're just very creamy and lovely. And then I did pick up this Chantecaille Luminescent Eyeshade in the shade Cheetah because they were having a 25% off sale during the holiday season. It was one day only and it was 25% off everything. Usually these are restricted from that discount code, but it wasn't. And I don't have Cheetah in my collection. I thought I did. I don't know if I decluttered it or if it got lost when I moved. But this is just such a beautiful, warm champagne shade that I thought would be perfect for every day. I feel like this is what I wanted the Victoria Beckham, um, what was that called, chiffon shade to be. That shade was just a little bit too much of a chunky glitter for me. So I'm just going to take this on a Sonia G. This is a builder too. And I'm going to press it onto the eye. So again, this is definitely pigmented. It has more pigmentation than some other eyeshadows that I like, like with a more satin finish. This definitely has those intermittent shimmers to it, but it is not a chunky glitter. It is just a very sophisticated shimmer, kind of like a grown up glitter, I wanna say, because it's just very classy looking. And then I'm just gonna go in with my fingertips to just get a little bit more pigmentation, but it also makes the shimmer particles appear more smooth. It doesn't appear as like sporadic on the eyes, if that makes sense. So I just get more of that kind of wet glow on my eyes where it just melds into the eyes very beautifully. I think that is beautiful. This is exactly what I wanted, just that beautiful warm champagne that I think you could probably use on a daily basis because I don't think it overwhelms the eyes. It's not too intense. Very beautiful. And on the lower lash line, I'm just going to dip back into that 
Oh, no, it's this shade here, that gray shade, that matte taupe shade. And I'm going to run this across the lower lash line just ever so slightly. So I just went in with my Gucci mascara, just one coat. And I'm going to move on to the face. And I am going to start off with my favorite primer. This is the Chantecaille Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint. And I just like to apply a little bit under my eyes to add some brightness under there. And it adds a very, very subtle glow, which I like. It just has this really beautiful blurring effect so that I require less concealer over top. And it is nice and hydrating. I have dry under eyes, so this really helps prep my under eyes for concealer to come. Just so during the day it doesn't get too dry or um, it can start to look a little bit heavy on under the eyes if you don't go ahead and prime your under eyes a little bit or add a little bit of eye cream. And then I like to add a little bit to where my smile lines are because I'm a little bit dry in this area. And then I'm also going to go in with the Paula's Choice Smoothing Primer Serum. This is a broad spectrum SPF 30. I do already have an SPF underneath this, but this is just a nice addition. I take just a little bit of that and I literally just add it right to where my pores are. And if you are oily, you could add it to like your chin and the middle of your forehead. And I like to just press it into the skin because I find it blends the best that way. And during the sale, I also picked up the Chantecaille Lake Camouflage Stilo Anti-Fatigue Anti -fatigue Corrector Pen in the shade 3. And then I also picked up the Dior, what is this called, Backstage Flash Perfector Concealer in the shade 2N. I picked this up because I had one of those $100 gift cards to Sephora, the, the ones that you can get when you're VIB Rouge if you purchase them in time. And I picked this up during the sale, like I said. I don't know which one I should use today. I think I'm going to, maybe I'll just use both of them. So I'm going to start with the Backstage Concealer. I'll just use this as a typical concealer, and then I'll add some brightness with the Chantecaille. So I'm going to add it to the areas where... It's a little bit of a scent to it. I'm going to add it to the areas where I'm darkest. And then as always, I like to clean up that edge here because I am a little bit dark there. And then I just like how this adds a little bit of a lifting effect. When I apply it to that outer corner, it just kind of lifts the face and makes everything look nice and lifted, like I said. And to blend that in, as always, going in with my Beauty Blender sponge. And I do like to do concealer before foundation because I just find that it blends a little bit better into the skin. Sometimes when you apply concealer over top of foundation, you can just see the line where you've applied concealer. Um, so I just like that more seamless application that this gives me. And also I find that I go in with less foundation when I do my concealer this way. But it is totally personal preference. So this Dior Backstage Concealer is nice. It's blending into the under eyes very beautifully. It seems to be more of a matte concealer though. I, I like it, but I still feel like I like the other Dior concealer better. Just because I'm not a fan of a super matte concealer, but I know a lot of people like this one, but they might have more oily skin than I do. It's still nice, like it doesn't look bad on the under eyes. I just feel like off initial application I do like the other concealer which I'm so sad because Dior reformulated it. I know Dior is making a movement where they're going more clean with their beauty products but unfortunately when brands are going more clean they're adding floral extract and as someone with sensitive skin it is so irritating to my skin so I just can't purchase any of like Dior's um, clean products because of that floral that they're adding into it which is so frustrating but Anyways, that's just a little rant that I have with these brands that are going clean, just with someone with sensitive skin. These floral extracts or these essences or these fragrances, you just can't use them with sensitive skin. It'll make me break out, turn my skin red, very irritating on the skin. So it's a little unfortunate. So it's a nice concealer. I do feel like it looks like it's sitting in lines a little bit more than my Chanel concealer or my Sisley concealer. It just looks a little bit drying. So it's not my favorite, but I think this would be good if I'm in a rush or something, or maybe I just don't want to go in with my more expensive concealers if I'm just running errands or something. So I guess it's nice to have on hand, but not a favorite initially off the bat. I am going to go in with this Chantecaille pen and I'm going to 
brighten the under eye. So I'm going to add just a little bit again to this area right where I am the darkest. I really like this formula though. It's, it seems like a very nice thin consistency. I can't believe I haven't tried this before. And then I am going to actually just let that sit on the under eyes for like 20 seconds just so it gets a little bit more coverage to it because it looks like it's quite a thin consistency or a thin texture so it doesn't look like it's going to add a ton of coverage. And then I will blend it into the skin. Ooh, that's really nice. Okay, that made the Dior concealer look better. It kind of smoothed out that concealer. Maybe it just added a little bit of hydration. So I like this. If I had to choose a concealer off the bat, I would go with this Chantecaille, but I feel like this is more of a brightening pen. So if you're someone that has darker under eye circles, you're going to want to apply this over top of a corrector or a concealer because it's not going to add a ton of coverage. Like for me, I'm going to use that Chantecaille pen to add brightness to kind of counteract that those um, dark circles and add a little bit of brightness, but I'm not going to rely on it to cover my under eye circles, if that makes sense. For foundation, I don't have a new foundation. Well, I technically have a new foundation because I bought a backup of the Chantecaille. This is the oil-free gel foundation, the Future Skin Foundation. I picked it up in the shade Vanilla. I initially had the shade Cream, and I think I'm trying not to self-tan as like heavily as I was, so I'm actually a bit lighter in skin tone now. So I wanted to get a lighter shade that was a little bit more neutral, and I also needed a new one because I'm pretty sure my old one was expired. It was probably like two years old, which is kind of gross when I think about it. And now I have the shade Vanilla, and this is like the perfect match for me, perfect undertone. It's deeper than I assumed it would be because you would think Vanilla sounds like quite a light shade. I'd say this is a light to medium neutral tone. So I'm just going to take this. This is one of my favorite, favorite foundations. Now with this foundation, because it is quite water-based and it is a super light coverage, normally I like to go in with beauty blenders to apply my foundation, but I think a brush is the best way to apply this foundation just because of how sheer it is. And with that, I just like to apply it to the Shiseido brush. And then I will go on the skin. And this is just the most beautiful, beautiful skin-like foundation that I have ever experienced. It is literally your skin, but better. It is one of those gorgeous foundations where you can't detect products sitting on top of your skin. It just melts right in. And you can't detect that it's foundation, but it makes your skin just look so smooth. It makes your skin look better. Redness dissipates. Now it's not going to add a ton of coverage, so you are going to have to go in with an additional concealer if you're someone that likes a fuller coverage or if you have any discoloration. But one of the most phenomenal foundations, especially in person, because again, it's undetectable on the skin, which makes it really great. And it's actually um, a foundation that they use on HD camera. Like I know it really got um, hyped up because it was used in the show Euphoria. Because again, it just looks like skin and you can't detect that these celebrities are wearing makeup on their skin, which just makes it so beautiful. It's such a lovely, lovely foundation. So this is a foundation that I always rely on. Like I said, it's the most beautiful in-person foundation that I have ever experienced. So that is why this is a repurchase for me. It is just phenomenal. It blurs the skin. It perfects the skin without adding coverage. It wears all day long. And I also did actually get it in a different shade. So I picked up two shades. This is the shade Porcelain. And I picked up this shade, you can see it is quite a bit lighter than me, just because a few of my foundations actually run a little bit too dark for me. So I figured this would be nice to have on hand because I can mix just like a scotch of it, like a touch of it, if any of my foundations are a little bit too dark for me. And I find that this mixes well into any foundation and any foundation that I add it to, it's just going to sheer out that foundation a little bit as well because this is so light coverage. So I figured this would be the perfect foundation mixer if my foundation is running a little bit too deep. So just another little tip. I do like to just run over everything with my Beauty Blender sponge after I've applied that foundation, just to ensure that there's no brush strokes from that foundation brush. So like I said, that Chantecaille foundation isn't going to add an immense amount of coverage. So I do have a few little spots I just wanna cover up a little bit more. I have this little red spot here, so I'm just going to apply it with this Clé de Peau concealer. This is the concealer, the new formulation in the shade Almond. And I'm taking this on this concealer brush. I do have linked down below my favorite brushes now because a lot of you guys ask me what brushes I'm using and sometimes I forget to mention it. And then I just have a little spot there. 
I really like this because it just blends in concealer really nicely. So I'm just pressing it into the skin. So I do still have like freckles and stuff showing if you can see. I don't know if you can tell, like my skin doesn't look absolutely perfect and flawless, but I really like this amount of coverage because I still think it looks like real skin. So I think that in person it looks really beautiful because again, you can see a little bit of freckles peeking through. So I have to say, I found a new favorite bronzer. This is such, such a good formulation. I absolutely love it. And this is the Valentino bronzer. And you can see this does not look like very fancy packaging. And that is because I bought the refill because the actual bronzer that you can purchase is ridiculously expensive and I'm not spending over $200 on a bronzer. That is just ridiculous. So this is the Go Clutch On The Move bronzer and it is the refill. And honestly, for a refill, that's like decent packaging. I thought it was just gonna come in like plastic packaging like the Clay De Peau refill blushes do. I can use this, this is fine. No, it's not the most luxurious looking, but I would way rather have this and spend over $200 on the actual bronzer. This formula is insane. It is the most gorgeous formula. I did see Ali Andrea, she posted about this in her best makeup of 2022. And I just decided I really like her makeup style because it's very similar to mine. It's more of that um, makeup that enhances your natural beauty. And so I just thought, you know what, I wanted to try it out. The refill isn't terribly expensive. I picked it up during Sephora's 20% off sale. And I am blown away. Now I want to say, I feel like this is such a good dupe for the Chanel. This is the Le Beige Oversized Healthy Glow Sun Kiss Powder. I hate to use the word dupe because I think that's an overused term. You can see mine, mine broke, I dropped it, it's a long story. But this formulation is very, very similar to this Valentino bronzer. I would say that the Chanel just has a little bit more of a golden shimmer that is um, throughout it. This has less of a sheen, but it still does have a slight sheen to it. The Chanel is just more of a golden sheen, but the formulation is very similar. It's a very, very creamy powder. I would say it's like a powder to cream formula. Like when you feel it, it is very silky. It's, it is pigmented, again, similar to the Chanel. It just has such a creamy quality to it. So it is nice and pigmented, but it blends really easily. It has that blurring capability like the Chanel powder does. So if you were someone that missed out on this powder, get your hands on this Valentino bronzer, but pick up the refill, it is phenomenal. So with this, because it is more of a pigmented formula, I like to pick it up on my brush. So again, I like to start with a little bit of product and you can see I'm gently tapping in and then I tap that excess off on the back of my hand because I do not want too much powder on my face initially. And then I am just blending this on top of the skin and it's such a gorgeous formula blends like a dream, even though it is pigmented, it because of that creamy formulation, it blends out very easily. So I'm so excited that I picked up this bronzer because honestly, I was wondering what I was going to do about this Chanel bronzer because I hate using it on camera because you can't pick it up anymore. And also it's just sad when one of your favorite bronzers is limited edition and you just can't recommend it to people. But this formulation is beautiful. It is so similar. Obviously, it's a downfall that the packaging isn't as luxurious, but honestly, I would like travel with this because now it's just super easy to travel with, and I don't think it looks that bad for plastic packaging that contains a refill. It's not that bad, but regardless, really love that. And I am going to use my favorite highlighter. I don't have a new highlighter. This is the Chantecaille Lotus Radiance Highlighter. It just comes in one shade. It's just called the Lotus Radiance Highlighter. Such a gorgeous formulation. Again, this is more of a powdery highlight, so it's almost, I wanna say it's more powdery than it is highlight, and it has no detectable shimmer particles, so if you're someone that doesn't like that, you will absolutely love this formulation. To me, it just looks like your skin is enhanced. It makes your cheekbones stand out a little bit more. It just makes you look slightly radiant without the shimmer particle. It adds a lovely brightness. It adds dimension back to the skin. So it's just beautiful. Now I mentioned that I have a new favorite bronzer. Well, I also have a new favorite blush. Now Valentino was not available to pick up in Canada for a while. So it's actually just been recently added to this Canadian Sephora site. And I picked up one of the blushes because again, I heard Ali Andrea talk about this in her favorites video. And I picked up the shade number eight initially, which is this beautiful peachy pink coral shade. 
there is a little bit of a sheen to it, but again, it's not detectable shimmer, especially on the skin. I did notice that when I swatched it on my hand, you can see a little bit of shimmer particles, but when you get it on the face, you can't detect it, except if you're out in actual daylight. So I would not reach for this if I was going to like an outdoor event, because then I think the shimmer is a little bit more detectable. But if you are indoors and if you are just even next to a window, you can't detect the shimmer particles sitting on the skin or anything like that. You can't see that detectable shimmer. So it's very interesting how that you can see it on the hand, but once blended onto the skin, you can't see it. So I loved this formula so much that I actually picked it up in another shade. This is the shade number nine. I wanted something that was a little bit more neutral. I thought this would be more of a neutral kind of brownie, maybe like a brownie pink shade. It's a little bit more peachier than what I expected but it's still gorgeous and it's such a lovely formula, very similar to the bronzer where it is this really creamy formula. It's so unique. It, it doesn't feel like an actual cream blush. It definitely feels like a powder, but it just feels like a really creamy powder. It is very pigmented though. So I would caution using this if you are a beginner because it has quite a lot of pigment. Um, so you just need to be a little bit careful with that. So I literally just dip my brush in twice into that powder I make sure to get that excess off on the back of my hand because like I said, these are pigmented, but even though they're pigmented, they are easy to blend and their pigment isn't anything. I'm making it sound very, very, very pigmented, but they're nothing compared to like a Pat McGrath blush. Those are very, very pigmented, but I just think you need to use caution if you are a beginner, but I just think oh, the formula of this is lovely. It makes, it really enhances your skin, so it makes your, your cheeks look even better. What a beautiful formulation. I am so impressed by this, and I don't know if people just aren't hyping these up, or if maybe they're just really expensive for what they are. They are a nice addition to my blush wardrobe, because I have been super, super picky with my blushes. Like I said, I will have a blush declutter coming up, um, but basically I'm getting rid of almost all my blushes and this is really nice because these blushes have a sheen, but they don't emphasize texture on the skin and that is um, very hard to do for a powder that has a little bit of a sheen to it or that has a bit of a glow to it. Normally those types of products emphasize texture, but this is that type of sheen that doesn't emphasize texture and actually makes your skin look better. Really great formula because it has that quality where it melts right in. And probably my favorite thing about this blush is the longevity. I can't believe how long wearing this blush is. I will put it on and usually by the end of the day my blush fades a little bit. But with this it literally looks as intense when I apply it at the end of the day. It is crazy because I'm just so not used to that. It almost like stains the skin I want to say. And I wonder if it's because of that really creamy formula. I forget if I said, but I went in with the shade number eight. So I went in with the more peachy coral one. It's absolutely flawless and stunning. And just to blend everything into the skin to make sure there's no harsh lines, everything was beautifully blended. I'm taking the Sonia G buffing brush and my favorite Chantecaille Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. So I like to start by kind of, I'll just stamp it on the tops of the cheekbones and then I'll just buff it onto the skin so that again, everything looks seamless. You can't see product sitting on top of the skin. Everything just looks blended in and looks as one so that it doesn't look like harsh lines. I just realized I forgot to tight line, so I'm just gonna take this Hourglass Boye Waterproof Gel Eyeliner in the shade K, which is a dark brown. I've just been liking the brown to tight line lately, so just running this on the upper waterline. And then just to make the center of my skin just right here, completely poreless and blurred, I'm gonna take the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Finishing Powder. I literally just press it in twice and just dab it right here where I want everything to look smooth and blurred and filtered. And for lips, I have a new to me. This is the Sisley Phyto Lip Twist in the shade number 24. So Sisley had a 20% off sale. I decided to pick this up and I also picked up a backup of the bronzer just because I love a sheer lip tint and I figured this would be perfect for me. And I'm just going to apply that on the lips. I wanna do a sheer lip video. So I'll probably film that coming up. But this is the, the perfect My Lip But Better shade. Absolutely gorgeous. I also got one of the Dior Lip Maximizers. This is the new formula. I got this in my stocking at Christmas, so I didn't purchase this. My mom got it for me. Um, and this is in the shade 012 Rosewood. 
So I have not tried out this formula yet. I guess they revamped it or something. I'm sure hopefully it won't be different because I felt like the previous formula was impeccable, but I don't know. I feel like that feels the exact same to me. So if you liked the previous version, I'm pretty sure you'll like the new formula. It doesn't have a weird scent or anything. It feels just as comfortable on the lips. I like to use these to prime my lips um, or over top to finish off a lip look, but I don't know. I feel like that feels the exact same to me. I don't notice a difference. I'm going to go over the products quickly. Um, so the Chantecaille Future Skin Gel Foundation. This is a favorite. This is a repurchase. I just repurchased two. So if you're wondering if I like this, it's a clear favorite staple for me. It's such a great everyday foundation. Looks like skin. Looks seamless. You cannot detect this. Perfect, perfect in-person foundation. Now let's talk about this Dior Concealer. Don't love it. I don't hate it. I don't think it's a terrible product. I just don't think it looks that great on my under eyes, even though I did go in with uh, that hydrating Chantecaille um, Sheer Rose Glow Face Tint underneath. I still think it looks a little bit drying on my under eyes. Just doesn't look as seamless as I'm used to concealers looking. I feel like you can actually detect concealer on my under eyes, which is just not my favorite. I like things to be a little bit more unnoticeable. I'm wondering if it will be better if I use the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch underneath. Um, almost, almost kind of similar to a primer. This will add a little bit of coverage and then maybe I can add this over top. I just feel like this is a little bit more moisturizing so maybe that will counteract this mattifying effect that this has on my under eyes. Now keep in mind that I have extremely dry skin and dry under eyes. So that may be why this doesn't work as well. But I think it's okay. It's good. I wouldn't recommend it though. And then this Chantecaille Le Camouflage Stilo Anti-Fatigue Corrector Pen. I like this, but again, I'm going to have to test it out with my more normal concealers, like maybe using my Sicily concealer and using this over top to brighten. Like I said, I think this would be nice as an everyday concealer if you just want a little bit of color correction, but it's not going to be a medium coverage concealer. So for me, I have a little bit of darker under eye circles, so I need something a little bit stronger than this. I just like to be a little bit more covered up. So for me, this would be a brightening pen that I would add over top of a concealer. And it's really hard to say what I think about it because I don't love that Dior concealer. So I'm going to keep testing this out. I'm sure it's great. It did make the Dior concealer look better because I think it added a little bit of hydration under my eyes. But I will keep testing this out and then, of course, let you know. And then I am going to mention this bronzer from Valentino. Again, don't purchase the full size because I just feel like that's a ripoff. If you're someone that really enjoys that really fancy packaging, I mean, it's not that fancy. It's kind of clunky and doesn't feel that luxurious. But if you are someone that just really likes that, then maybe you want to purchase the full size. I think this refill does it, um, and I'm just talking about the product itself, and this product is just so gorgeous. Really very similar to this Chanel Le Beige Oversize Healthy Glow Sun Kiss Powder in the shade medium specifically. They are so, so similar. The Chanel just has a more of a golden sheen to it, but the formulation is very similar. It's that very creamy quality. It really blurs the skin. It perfects the skin. It makes your skin look even better. What a stunning formulation. It's such a crazy powder because it just feels very creamy. This is a new favorite bronzer. Absolutely love this. I feel like you have to try this out. It is phenomenal. And these blushes I'm so pleasantly surprised with as well. So I think, I think number eight is probably my favorite shade. I just really like the health that it brings back to my skin. I think it is pretty. I don't think it contrasts with anything. Like I still think it looks um, really gorgeous. But if you did want something more neutral, I think this shade number nine is really gorgeous as well. Definitely more of a nude tone, which I think would work for any eye color, or any lip color. I just love this. And this is different enough from the Gucci blushes. So I know a lot of people ask me for a comparison. The Gucci blushes are more on the matte side. These have more of a glow to them, a little bit more of a sheen. Again, without detecting those shimmer particles. But if you are someone with like larger pores and you really don't like glow, Go for the Gucci blushes. You will love those. They are like a standout number one favorite. Um, but these are beautiful. If you do like something with a little bit of a glow to it, but a glow that doesn't emphasize texture, doesn't make the pores look worse or anything. It makes your skin look better. It enhances the skin. And then I really like this Sisley Phyto Lip Twist. I think it is beautiful. It's expensive for what it is. It's like a sheer tinted um, 
lipstick or kind of that hybrid lip balm lipstick but I got it for 20% off so I guess for me that's worth it really beautiful shade beautiful formula feels very comfortable something I can throw in my handbag and just touch up easily and I really like this duo lip maximizer not much to say about it it's great to prep the lips with it's great to finish off your makeup with I think this is really nice and then also this Chantecaille Luminescent eyeshade I really like this I still think that the lion shade is my favorite I like this for a neutral look, but I think my favorite way to use this will be topping off another shadow to brighten it up. So if I finish off my makeup and maybe it's a little deeper than what I'd like, I'd probably finish this off to add a little bit more brightness. Or I think it'd be really nice to actually mix with the Chantecaille Lion shade. Um, that's more of a neutral bronze shade, and sometimes I find it like maybe a little bit too dark. So again, to add a little bit of brightness. I would probably use it for that purpose, but Lion's still my favorite. This is just a nice addition. This is probably my second favorite though. But that is it for this trying new makeup video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If I had to mention my standout products, those Valentino products, just absolutely beautiful. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it, and I'll see you in my next video.